It is said that one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, I'm not sure about that, but there is a way you can make money investing in garbage, or at least a company that disposes of that garbage. Pass it down your recycling bins, folks. This is going to be a good one. When we look at recession-proof companies, we often forget that waste removal is another of those services that continues, whether the economy is good or poor. People will always have trash and recyclables, and that is where a company like Waste Connections, Inc., enters the picture. Waste Connection has been around since 1997, and it is a leading waste management provider across both Canada and, of course, the U.S. They offer comprehensive services, including solid waste collection, transfer, disposal, and recycling. The company also handles non-hazardous oil field waste and provides rail transport services for cargo and solid waste in the Pacific Northwest. They are guided by a community-focused philosophy that puts its customers first, aiming to deliver excellent local service while leveraging technology and, of course, growth. Committed to environmental improvement, the company seeks cost-effective waste solutions, explores innovative technologies, and prioritizes reducing landfill disposal and greenhouse gas emissions. They are serving millions of customers from residential to commercial and industrial sectors. Waste Connection offers tailored services to meet varying waste management needs. I guess there's more than one way to approach a little bit of garbage. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments your favorite recession-proof stocks. Your participation is well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content. And thank you for that click. We already mentioned that WCN is a recession-proof stock, and we only need to peek in on their 10-year chart to see that. Holy banana bread, that looks pretty impressive. This is a company that totally looks good in what they do and how they appear on the surface. But despite looking good, we really need to look much deeper if we are going to find out if they are a great investment for your portfolio. To do that, we don't need a garbage man, but instead, we should check in with our good old buddy, Mr. Math. As usual, we will start with some surface data. They've got a pretty healthy market cap of $48.11 billion, and they have a beta of 0.57. This beta being almost half as volatile as the market average is really not surprising in a recession-proof company. Their earnings per share come in at 0.16, and they have a price-to-earnings ratio of 42.70. Sounds high, but the actual average in their sector is 51.60. This is a good P.E. ratio for their industry, and that industry actually ranges from, well, at the bottom, we've got Universal Prop Tech with a P.E. of 1.30, going all the way up to Open Lane Inc. with a really high P.E. of 189.80. So that places them middle of the road, and that's not a bad place to be. Let's switch over and look at their price to book ratio. That comes in at 5.0. Once again, the average is 7.80. So these numbers are not that shabby. Their return on equity, that comes in at 12.20%. I'd like to see that a little higher, but it's still not bad. In fact, overall, looking at the surface data, I am thinking if they are undervalued, it'll not be by a lot. And there is the potential they could even be overvalued. But once again, not by a lot. Let's switch over and take a look at their cash situation. So their revenue, that comes in at $7.47 billion. Their earnings, $853.15 million. Now those earnings, they are projected to grow by 11.65% per year, which is great. Last year, they actually grew by 33.7%, which is, well, that's even better. They do have a free cash flow of $1.09 billion, which is pretty cool. And their operating cash flow, that comes in at $2.02 billion dollars. So they do have a little bit of cash to work with, which is fantastic. Now, when we look at their current value, it comes in at $186.85. And using a discounted cash flow model, that fair value comes in a little bit lower at $169.94. That does make them overvalued by, well, 10%. This is pretty much what I was expecting, though honestly, I was kind of leaning, uh, well, 10% in the other direction. But still, it's not that bad. Let's now check out the dividends and their returns. When we look at their dividends, they have a yield of 0.743%. That is paid out quarterly in the amount of 25.5 cents USD per share. That works out to a payout ratio of 29.22%. So that is absolutely sustainable. When it comes to returns on the three year, their share price rose from $138.60 to $186.85. That's a return on investment of 34.81%. And adding in the dividends, we do get a total return of 36.47%. So that's not too bad. Switching to their one year, 
That price rose from $163.44 to $186.85. That is a return on investment of 14.32%. Add in those dividends again, and we get a total return of 14.93%. And that's actually a really good number when you consider most of that year we were in a bear market. So... 2023, how have we done this year? So this year, we've gone up from $181.22 to $186.85. That is a return on investment of 3.11%. Add in that dividend, we get a total return of 3.39%. Actually, it was two dividends, but who's counting? That is still not too bad because we did spend a lot of this year in that bear market. So these numbers are fine. I like them. Okay, let's take a look at the debt though. So their total debt comes in at 6.94 billion and they have a total equity of 7.24 billion. Okay, that's not too bad. That does create a debt to equity ratio of 95.9%. One thing though that is concerning about this debt to equity ratio is that it has been rising. Five years ago, it was only 62.1%. So they're not moving in the right direction with that debt to equity ratio. Now they do also have a little bit in cash and equivalents that comes comes in at 148.73 million. All right, let's take a look at their assets short and long term. So on the short term, their assets come in at 1.13 billion, liabilities come in at 1.38 billion. Okay, well, I could use a little bit more assets and liabilities there, but let's move on. Long term, we have assets of 16.09 billion, liabilities of 8.60 billion. That's much better. Short and long term, it's not that bad, but it is also not ideal, especially the short term. I would like to see those short term assets a little higher to say the least. Overall, their debt is well covered by their operating cash flow and the interest payments on that debt are easily covered by their EBIT earnings before interest and taxes. So what is that final verdict? Waste Connections is without a doubt a good recession-proof, safe, long-term investment. They are what I often refer to as a foundation stock, meaning they provide a lot of safety to your overall portfolio picture. I do not like their debt, even though it is in balance with their equities, and would love to see them bring that debt to equity ratio down. I think they will do that though, not as fast as I would like, but they will get it done. Their business is one that is always innovating as they find new ways to minimize environmental impacts of waste management. They will always have some amount of debt as a result, and that's something you have to come to terms with if you dislike debt as much as I do. If you are a purely passive income focused investor, this may not be the stock for you. There are other recession proof blue chip stocks you can use to add safety to your portfolio with significantly more dividends. Now, if you're a growth focused investor, this is a great stock for the growth and for overall diversification. The need for waste management is never going away, so that does bode well for a stock like this. For the total return investor, this is an okay stock, but you are not really going to get much of a contribution on the dividend side. The growth will still be solid, and there are better options like a railroad stock. However, in terms of diversification, this does make this a better option than at first glance. Whatever your investment style, this is a safe choice, and it may be an asset that will do well in all market conditions. Still, before you jump into this or any stock you see on the YouTubes, just be sure to do your own research as it is your hard earned money and that demands a little bit of respect. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on cash ETFs linked on the left or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner and I will see you in the next video.